In this video, I'm going to cover three things that have impacted the housing market this week. Number one, CPI, Consumer Inflation Report. Two, PPI, which is the Producer Inflation Report. And three, the FOMC meeting results from yesterday. So how will this impact the mortgage rates and the value of homes? Well, let's dive right into it. And before I begin, good afternoon, everybody. Luis here wishing you a wonderful afternoon. And this is your market update video to give you some sense of where the housing market is at and where it's going. Again, if there's anything you want me to uh, research or cover or confirm, please just reply to my email or simply comment below. So let's start with the Consumer Price Index Report, which is a report that measures inflation to the consumer. So overall, we saw a decrease of inflation and there's a lot to cover on that report. There's a lot of areas, but we're just gonna focus on four key takeaways from uh, Tuesday's report. One, the first one is energy. So we all know that cheaper energy played a major role in bringing down the cost of goods. So inflation went down from 4.9% last month to 4%, but energy had a lot to do with it. Gas prices plunged like 20% from last year when Russia's invasion of Ukraine sent fuel costs to the moon. So this is all really good. Number two, which is kind of funny, is revenge spending. That is down. Now think about it. Once the pandemic lockdowns were lifted, Americans splurged on vacations, leisure, and recreation in what a lot of economists are calling revenge spending. Now that everybody has taken that week-long trip, and uh, there are signs that revenge spending revenge spending is uh, stalling. Airfare prices are down 13% uh, year over year. And even the hotel demand is, uh, is below 2019 levels. So all of this is really good for inflation. Number three, food prices are up. The cost of goods ticked up about 0.2% in May from April. After staying flat for a little while, um, but this is showing that inflation has persisted at the grocery stores. So that is not good. But not everything at the grocery store has been increasing. The price of eggs has dropped nearly 14% from April, uh, while fruit and vegetables have risen about 1.3%. So it's a mixed bag of goods. And number four, rents. More than anything else, rent is propping up all this inflation. Shelter costs are the largest category in the CPI report, and they're still on an upward march, climbing to 8.7% from a year earlier. This is exactly why I urge renters to bite the bullet and buy their homes. It's important because rents continue to go up. Now, let's talk about the producer price index or the PPI, which is an inflation report that measures what the manufacturers or the producers of goods are feeling in terms of inflation. Now, this is important because if the manufacturers are paying more for goods, well, they need to charge more for the goods and that causes inflation. So overall, uh, the report this week, we saw a decrease of inflation and is now sitting at just 1.1% based on yesterday's report. And this is all signaling lower future inflation, which is good for mortgage rates. And we like this. We love this. Let's talk about yesterday's FOMC meeting. Fed Chair Jerome Powell announced a pause in interest rate hikes after 10 consecutive increases. He said if inflation continues to drop like it did last month, he may not have to start up the hikes again anytime soon. But he did add a comment that caused the markets to go a little wild. He said he is doing a hawkish pause, meaning if there's any sign of inflation, a reversal will take place and they will increase the rates even more. Now, this is the comment that upset the bond market and it's the uncertainty. That's what the market doesn't like. So in short, we don't know what's going to happen. Remember, rates were supposed to drop in May because inflation was tapering down. June showed a bigger drop in inflation. Meanwhile, today's jobless claims report shows unemployment applications are higher again this week at 262,000, which is higher than expected. So why am I sharing all of this? Well, it's to give you a little more insight on how the fundamentals aren't really applying right now. Housing seems to be going up because there's such a shortage because of population growth. And that is causing the rents to go up as well and the price of homes to go up. It's a tough position to be as a home buyer. But if you don't buy, the longer you wait, the higher the rents go and 
then the more expensive the houses get. So you, you're kind of just have to bite the bullet and do everything you can to get into your home. So Louise, that's all fine and dandy, but what does that mean for mortgage interest rates? Well, let's take a look. Here are today's mortgage rates. So today, this is based on a $500,000 purchase, uh, owner-occupied single-family residence, and the FICO score is 740. We're looking at VA at 6.125, which is down. It actually went down, even though the market got a little volatile, the rates did drop from last from uh, my last uh, market update. So it's at 6.125, and uh, FHA, it's the same thing, 6.125, that hasn't changed. And conventional, it's uh, about the same at 6.99%. So we're back into the sixes. So rates overall are slightly down, even after all that volatility. Uh, but home prices are up, rents are up. So if you're a renter, get into the market. We have some down payment assistance programs that can uh, really help. And veterans, you can buy with zero down up to $3 million if uh if you can afford it. And if you're a current homeowner, consider buying a rental. It's a good time since the rents are going up. And yes, I know rates are up, but don't worry about the high rates because you can always refinance later. Call me, email me, or DM me so that I can show you a rent versus own analysis so that you can see how it is much cheaper to buy than to rent. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at LuisRenteria underscore home loans for more tips and info. Thank you for watching. Bye.